How can we learn to feel the soul of God as a real experience and to trust the purity of its source? Well, I suppose there's two aspects to this question, isn't it? There's firstly feeling the soul of God. And the second part, which I feel is a very important part of this question, is trusting that God is the source of those experiences. And the second is very much more difficult, probably, to achieve than the first in some ways, um, because, because there are many spirits masquerading as gods who wish to engage humans in their addictions in order to have certain emotions met on the spirit side. And so, you know, sometimes we long for God to come, like someone like Neil Donald Walsh, for example, mm. longed for God to come to him. And because of certain addictions that he has, a spirit who claimed himself to be God, and, and also not a very developed spirit who claimed himself to be God, came to him and claimed himself to be God and started sharing or channeling, if you like, spirit through this mediumship process, all of these truths. Mm to Neil Donald Walsh that Neil Donald Walsh now believes as completely true. Does that make sense? Now, that God who channeled to Neil Donald Walsh wasn't God. No. Because the truths that that spirit channeled to Neil Donald Walsh were very limited when it comes to the actual truths of the universe. Mm. And also, he channeled a lot of false teachings, such as reincarnation, mm. to Neil Donald Walsh and, uh, and told Neil Donald why she had 600 previous lives or so on yeah. and so forth, all of which is false. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so these, this is an indication that it was just a spirit who set himself up as God, channeling all of this material to Neil Donald Walsh, and Neil Donald Walsh was willing to accept it was God mm -hmm. yes, without consideration of anything else. And when I say it without consideration of anything else, it's the consideration of three primary things that will determine whether the connection is with God or not. It is love, truth, and humility. Mm. The same three things we keep mentioning. You see, if the teaching that is being channeled from a spirit to a person on earth does not contain love, then it can't be from God. If the teaching channeled from the spirit world is not demonstratedly able to be demonstrated through truth, then it can't be from God. And if the teaching results in the person on earth becoming arrogant mm. and self-satisfied and self-important, mm. then the teaching can't be coming from God. Mm. So, so the reality is that many of these so-called channelings from God that exist on, the, on earth today never came from God. They came from spirits setting themselves up either as an intermediary between God and man or as God themselves, they believe themselves to be God, and they channel all of this information of what they believe truth to be. So that then raises the question, as you said, how do I know that I'm actually connecting with God? Mm. Well, the connection with God is, as we know, established through the connection with the Holy Spirit. And I know you have a question about the Holy Spirit coming, so I won't elucidate too much about the question. But Holy Spirit is a, is a spirit of truth. It requires you to be in a complete condition of personal truth and honesty with yourself before you will be able to connect with anything to do with God. In addition, it's dependent upon humility and longing. Mm. Now, God feels our true longings, mm. not our facade. Mm. So we can have a facade of longing for God and all we're going to attract in a facade is spirits who, in, who interpret, or, or what's the word I'm looking for, imitate, who imitate God, or attempt to at least imitate God. It is not going to be God herself, because while we're in our facade, we can only attract a facade. Yeah. In other words, yeah. while I'm trying to practice a facade myself, I'm only going to attract a God which is really a spirit mm. who is in the facade of God, who is, who is trying to themselves be God mm. and claiming themselves to be God. Mm. Mm. That's a very dangerous thing to do, of course, because then we're not connecting with God at all. If we are in our facade, the, fast, the best thing we can do first is get out of our facade to become real about ourselves. That's humility. We need to become humble about what's really in us. When we become humble about what's really in us, we now have the ability to petition God in our humility to receive truths. 
And we also have the ability to receive divine love from God if we're out of our facade. Mm. The majority of people who connect to God are not out of their facade. Or I should say more clearly, the majority of people who attempt the connection with God are in addictions with what they wish God to supply to them during the connection. Wow. As a result of that, it's highly unlikely they will ever connect to God. Because God requires us to be in a state of truth in order to connect to God. Truth and humility and longing for God's love. So the question you ask is a very important question if you look at it this way, because you see there are so many external influences that can imitate themselves as being God that the average person may even accept. I know many Christians who say to me, I hear God's voice every day. And God said to me, you know that scripture in Isaiah 24? You know, and they, re they ream off what God said to them. And I'm going, I'm sorry, my friend, but it's a spirit who's claiming to be God that you want to believe is God that's saying these things to you. That's all it is. Because if it was God, you wouldn't even hear the voice. It has to be a soul-to-soul -soul connection for it to be God. And God does not have the voice that appears in your mind or in your ear. That's not how God works, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. And they, of course, don't agree with that and wait until the spirit world, generally. They find out you were right. They <laughs> find out that that was correct. And yes. They actually finish up at some point often meeting the spirit who was, in, who was dropping all these words into them. If the spirit who was doing it was humble enough to even admit that he was doing it. But the real God the God that is our parent and creator, communicates with us soul to soul, but through this connection of the Holy Spirit. And the connection with the Holy Spirit is maintained through three states within ourselves. The first one being a state of humility, mm -hmm. which is a state of being open and willing to see every error and fault within ourselves. And also, by the way, every good thing and positive thing within ourselves. The state of truth, the passionate desire for divine truth to enter our heart, and the state of longing for the true God, the real God's love to enter our heart. Now, in the first century I said, God does not give us a snake right? when we ask for something else. God gives us instead exactly what we ask for. Mm. Yes. Now, if what we're asking for is a facade, okay. we will get one. Mm. If we're asking for a God who feeds our addictions, we will get a spirit who we think is God feeding our addictions. Wow. If we truly ask for a God who loves us and who, who wants to share truth with us and is willing to connect to us in our humility, that's when we'll get the real God. Right. Yeah. So you can see that it requires. Um, sorry, do I just need to stop for a sec? Yeah, we were up to. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, you just remember you were talking about when God said, um, oh, about if you're wanting for. a snake, he doesn't send. Oh, no, if you're wanting a, a fish, he doesn't send yeah, you a yeah, snake. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, you know, it's what you ask for is what you mm. get. So, but it's what you ask for from your soul. Mm not from your mind. Mm. So your mind might go, yeah, I'd like a bit of God's love, right? <laughs> but your soul is going, yeah, really what I want is I don't want to have to face any personal emotions. I don't want to have to face any personal untruth that I have. I don't want to have to change my life. I don't want to have to, you know, change my relationships or whatever else. I don't want to have to become more loving. Give me whatever it is you can give me with that. <laughs> mm. Mm. And of course, that's the prayer coming out of your soul. And so that's what you get. And what you'll get under those circumstances is often the heap of spirits, many of them dark, mm. connecting with you, imitating God or attempting to imitate God with you so that you think or believe that they are God. And you finish up hearing and, you know, getting all of, their, all of your addictions, everything you want met through those particular things. Of course, it doesn't last for a long period of time because it can't. Mm. When we truly go to God with a complete and pure heart, we will always get God. Mm. That's one of the laws of the universe, in mm. fact. But it requires that our heart is sincere and pure. 
And that is the problem. The problem for most people is they believe their heart is sincere and pure when at the same time it's quite clear to God that they're not sincere or purely motivated. And under those circumstances, the Holy Spirit cannot connect. Mm. And instead, other spirits who were people who used to live on earth connect instead. Mm. And those spirits may tell them all sorts of things. Some of those things may be good for their progression and some of those things may be bad. But they won't be connecting with God. Okay. To connect with God requires pure, unadulterated passion and desire mm. in the direction of truth and love. Mm. That's what it requires from mm. our soul. That's why the majority of people have initial influx of God's love and then never experience that again because they never reach the same condition of desire, for, passionately desiring truth and a passionate desire for God that's purely motivated. They rest on their laurels of the past experience. Mm. 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 So the only way that we can really tell whether we're really connecting with God is if, and if our motive is pure. And it's not what we think our motive is. It's what our motive actually is mm. that drives the connection. Mm. God always perfectly responds mm. to our motivation, whether our motivation is pure or not. And by that, what I mean is God responds by saying, no, I can't respond <laughs> to a motivation that's impure. Right. And instead, we will get other people responding mm. to that impure motivation. So would you pray for purity? Definitely. Mm. Pray for integrity. Pray for honesty with yourself. Mm. Pray for purity. All of these ultimate qualities that are a part of our soul can be prayed for and God will respond to these prayers. Okay. So you can be in a state of impurity, but you recognise that and you just don't know which way you're going. So. And that's the state of purity. Okay. Being in a state of impurity and knowing where you're impure is recognising a, hu a humble state. Right. In that humble state, you can go to God and know that you're yes. going to get God. Yes. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. So it's not that difficult. No, it's not difficult. You don't have to be perfect. Mm. You just have to be honest. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. That's why the Holy Spirit's called the Spirit of Truth, because <laughs> you have to be truthful. You have to be honest, not mm. only with yourself, but also with God and everyone around you. Mm. That's the only time that you'll get a connection with God. Now, the majority of people do not ma make that connection happen very frequently because it is rare that we're actually really completely honest with ourselves. Yeah. And it's rare that we really have a strong desire to do anything. And if you look at our day-to-day -day life, as I encouraged in a recent interview, or a recent talk that I gave about what is your treasure, mm. and you actually analyse how many hours you spend longing for God compared to how many hours you spend longing to watch the television... Often you will find that the longing to watch the television is much higher than your longing mm. <laughs> to connect with God. And, and God's really feeling what? Would God be feeling, yes, I, I feel like I'm really wanted in your life? No. Mm. God's feeling like, no, what you really want is your telly. So I'll give you a bigger one. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're not going to get God, though, in that interaction. Mm. Because, because God can know, knows your true motivations, mm. even if you are not willing to admit to them. God knows them. Now, if my longing is to watch telly for 20 hours a week and my longing is to connect to God for two hours a week, how important is God to me? Well, not very important, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. And if God's not that important to me, which kind of God is going to respond to my request when I give it? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. can you see that if I've got a, a, a request that lacks integrity and lacks purity, lacks desire then aren't I only going to attract a spirit who answers, who's willing to accede to my lack of integrity, yeah. accede to my lack of impurity, and accede to my lack of desire? Mm. God certainly isn't going to respond. Mm. Right? Now, that spirit may claim to be God, but it's immaterial. Mm, of course. And I'm just fooling myself if mm. I believe that I can spend two hours longing for God a week and actually get God. Mm. I, I'm really just fooling myself. Mm. If I... If I if I can find that I can spend more time watching the television than I can connecting with God, then I'm just fooling myself as to God's importance to myself in my life. Mm. I'm just fooling myself. And if I'm fooling myself, surely I'm going to attract a spirit who's willing to fool me as well. That's right. Mm. Yeah. But God wouldn't be willing to do such, so God wouldn't connect under mm. those circumstances. So this is where it requires a lot of honesty with self and a lot of personal integrity, a lot of self-analysis to see... 
is my desire really pure? Now, if it's not, you can make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can turn it into a pure desire. You know, if you find yourself watching 20, 20 hours of television a week and you spend one hour praying a week and you find yourself with that, what I would classify as a, as a priority issue <laughs> inside, of, inside of yourself, then you can swap it over to be 20 hours of God a week and two hours of television a week quite mm. easily mm. through your desire, through the exercise of your will. You could change if you so desired. But a lot of times uh, it's our addictions that are driving our actions in our day-to-day -day life and a lot of times we don't want to break our addictions and so we don't desire. Mm. And that really, again, it comes down to whether our desire for God is pure. Mm. Mm. When we have a pure desire for God that's driven by a longing and a humble heart that's desiring truth, God always answers, always. Mm. If God's not answering or a different God is answering, it's because of the impurity in one of those three things. Impurity with regard to our humility, our lack of desire for truth, or our lack of desire to have a relationship with God and actually receive God's love. Mm. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Nice.